All right, hello, hello, friends. So today what we're gonna do is we're finally gonna start doing some stuff with data structures. So we've been learning about big O, we've learned about uh, big O of N, one, uh, big O of N squared. So that's enough information to start learning about some data structures. But before we get into uh, arrays, which is gonna be our first data structure, we need a little bit of a, a teaser about how of what data structures actually are and what they do. So right here, if you go to Wikipedia, which is like totally infallible, uh, in computer science data structure is data organization, management, and storage format that enables efficient access and modification. More precisely, a data structure is a collection of data values, the relationships among them, and the functions or operations that can be applied. Okay, so this right here is just a like a, this is a uh, hash table. Then you have trees, you have arrays, you have uh, linked lists, you have stacks and queues. You have a lot of different array, uh, you have a lot of different data structures. We're gonna be looking at arrays today. So let's go over here to our big O uh, cheat sheet right here. And this was the big O notation that we were learning. We see the time complexity chart, but down here, let's go to the data structures part and let's look at the, uh, the operations that take place on these. So if we have an array, which is the first one that we're gonna be looking at, you can notice that it has O of, o of 1 access, and access search, insert, deletion, sorting, those are the normal actions that are going to be taken on any kind of data structure that you would have to know how they work and why you would use them. So, for example, in an array, you notice that it's really good at accessing, it's O of 1. Searching, insertion, and deletion, it's O of N, so it's a little bit slower, but then a stack has insertion and deletion of O of 1, whereas its access is O of N. So you can see just right there that there are strengths and weaknesses of each one. When you get down to binary trees, you can notice that there's this weird O of log N, which we haven't gotten to yet. Um, but when we get down there, we'll figure out what that means and how that might be a little bit more optimal for some solutions. So just let's just stick with arrays today. So before we get into coding out uh, from scratch, like how to make arrays and things like that, Let's just take a look at a couple of things. Let's go over here to our code editor. Uh, where is my code editor? Right here. So first thing we're looking at is arrays. We have to talk about a couple of things real quick though. Let's talk about RAM, RAM access memory versus persistent storage. So your computer has uh, any system that you're working in, it has access to RAM, it has access to persistent storage. RAM is uh, faster at gathering information and persistent storage is a little bit slower but more robust meaning that the persistent storage things like photographs audio files uh, applications those stay on your CPU uh, those stay on your system and are accessed a little bit slower but they but they persist there whenever you uh, reset the browser or do something like that they're not cleaned up or cache or, or they're not cleaned up or, or garbage collected whereas RAM random access memory, like let's say that we're working in the browser and we set up a variable of like uh, let A equal 100, well that isn't going to persist. So as soon as we refresh our browser, that is going to go away. But at the same time, it is faster to access it in the moment. It's called random access memory. It's a little bit faster, not persistent. So RAM works like this. Right here, this is, let's just say, this is kind of a simplified version of it, but this is how basically you store units of uh, units of data. So let's say that this right here, this is called a shelf. Uh, shelf has an address right here, and then it has bytes right here. It has eight bits that make up one byte. And a 32-bit system can store like one integer. So let's say that we had let A equal 100. Okay, so now we know that it's storing, it has an address, and we know that it's storing eight bits equal to one byte, and 32 bits makes up one unit of storing that we're gonna do on a 32-bit system, 32-bit system. So arrays, they are stored contiguously, meaning that they're stored next to each other. They're close in proximity. So if I have an R that is like, that equals one, two, three, four, five, these in memory are stored contiguously. They're not spread out all over the system. They're, they're physically right by each other. And so since they are like that, if we go back and look at our big O cheat sheet right here, we can see that access is O of one right here, which means that you can access things super quick. So let's take a look and let's just uh, 
high level figure out what's actually going on here. So let's say that we have a, an array called const r equals one, two, three, four, five. Okay. So let's say that we wanted to access something from that array. So if you just go uh, let, or we can just make another array, uh, another variable right here, or actually we can just console log. We'll just console log r at three. If we open up our, if we save that and open up our integrated terminal, come on, baby. Um, basically, what you can see is that if we run node five dot, it'll give us that four back. So zero, one, two, three. It gives us that four. Now that's very fast in terms of the way that it operates because it knows exactly where this is in memory and it can access things very fast that way. So this operation is a O of one. It's it's constant time and we already know that because we went over O of 1. So let's look at these other actions. So we want to search, insert, or delete. Let's leave search for, for later. Let's take a look at insertion and deletion. So let's say that we wanted to insert something here. Const r, or actually we'll just go r.splice and this is how you insert some stuff. And the first argument is going to be where you want to insert it. Let's say that I wanted to insert it at the second index, so 0, 1, 2, and let's say that I wanted to I don't want to delete anything, so I'll put a zero right here. And let's say that I wanted to insert new element. And let's take a look at that. So now let's uh, run this file again. And you can see, <laughs> not that. Let me console log down here. Console log R. And you can see that here we have a new element right there. Well, if we know exactly where these are in memory, why is it, if we look back, why is it O of N? to insert something, why isn't it O of 1 like accessing it? Well that's because, let's take a look at it like this. The array when it first starts out, it has, this is the indexes of it. 0, 1, 2, 3, 4. Now let's say that we wanted to insert something right here. Right here we just inserted, here we inserted new element. So now the indexes are still the same when we insert that. So we're going to have to, the, the system is going to have to go, oh, okay, so we need to change this to one, this will be two, this will be three, this will be four, and now this will be five. So you can see that we iterated over basically part of the array. We didn't iterate over the whole thing, but we iterated over part of it. So if we were putting it in the middle, then technically our big O would be big O of n divided by 2. But since our rule is to simplify, and if you don't understand about simplifying big O, you can go back and look at my video on this playlist about simplifying big O. We can take off this and just simplify it. In worst case, it would be O of n. So we would have to iterate through the length of the array to insert something. And that's the same goes as deleting because we have to, since we're having to switch the indexes of the elements within the array at n times, at worst case scenario, the amount of n times at worst case scenario, then it's an O of n process rather than an O of 1 process. So that's just a basic primer about arrays, how they store information, and how you can access information, delete information, push information, and pop. Oh yeah, I didn't go, I didn't go over that. So let's say that we wanted to get rid of this first element in this array right here or let's say that we want to get rid of the last element, this five right here. So there is a, uh, and I'll leave these commented out so you can have access to them. I'll link all this in my GitHub. So let's say that we did r.pop. What pop does is it eliminates the last element in the array. So if we console.log array again, you can see that the five is gone and we only have four. Now what's the big O of this? The big O of this would be big O of one. Because if you think about it, we're not, if the, if the elements in the array are such that it's like this, 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, and 5, when we delete the 5, it's just deleting like this. We don't have to run through the rest of the array and unshift the numbers or, or shift the uh, indexes on the elements. So it's now that's with pop, so that would be a big O of one. But what if we did R dot unshift? What R what unshift does, and we'll just put uh, first element. What unshift does is it takes it pushes 
it puts a new element at the very beginning of the array. So if we if we console log array right here, you can see we have a first element right here. But much the same as in uh, deletion and insertion, you're going to have to if the if the array is set up like this zero one two three and four, then as soon as we add something new here, we'll just add first element. Now the indexes are still initially going to be the same. They're going to be like this. So you would have to, over the rest of the array, go, oh, now this is one, this is two, this is three, this is four, and this is five. So this, for the unshift, the action, uh, the big O on that would be big O of n, meaning that it would have to iterate through the entirety of the array and unshift the, the, um, the elements. So unshift, pop, um, for insertion, you can, you can do splice. For deletion, you can actually use splice as well. For those operations, knowing what the difference in the big O complexity is will let you know if you need to use this data structure for a specific task. Um, the strengths and weaknesses of each data structure become more clear whenever you understand the big O notation that you're talking about. You're not just saying like, oh, well, I put something in there and it just kind of works. You actually understand the time complexity of it and the ramifications for using it later on down the road. You learned a little bit about how data is stored uh, in the RAM and the difference between RAM and persistent storage. So now what I think would be good is in the next video, we'll actually just start coding out an array from scratch because Whereas you'll never be asked to code out an array from scratch on a, in an interview, but it is good to know how to do it, and it does further cement your understanding of how the data structure works. And when we do get to more complicated data structures like trees, linked lists, doubly linked lists, and performing all the actions on those, like reversing them, inserting stuff in there, deleting stuff from there, it will just give you more practice as to how to understand that. So in the next video, we'll just start coding it out. Might do a small video about uh, object-oriented uh, class, class-based programming within JavaScript. Uh, I'm not sure yet. Or I might just start coding Mountain Teach as I go. But I hope this helped. Uh, Array is our first data structure, and we'll code it out in the next video. And so just stick around. Later.